For years, he was a leader within the city in the effort to redesign Alamo Plaza. Then last week, Mayor Ron Nuremberg removed him from his positions, adding to what has been a contentious battle over how we all remember the Alamo going forward. In today's KSAC Q&A, we are joined by District 1 City Councilman Roberto Trevino, now a former member of the Alamo Management Committee and former tri-chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Thank you for joining us, Councilman. I think the first question, this is the first opportunity we've had to talk to you. Your reaction to the events of the past week? Well, it's it's uh, obviously it's very disappointing uh, to uh, to put in six years uh, of, of hard work. Um, work that I was very proud to be a part of, and most importantly, it it was a, a team effort. A lot of a lot of great people have have come together to to get to where we are today. Uh, it's uh, it's such an in, incredible project. Um, we did a lot of great things working together, and again, it wasn't just me. Uh, it was quite a lot of folks uh, that were involved in this. And some talented professionals. Uh, it was a great partnership at the management committee, and uh, you know I, I I'm hopeful that uh, there'll be steps that uh, will move the city forward and move this project forward. Uh, however, obviously I'm I'm clearly disappointed that uh, the lieutenant governor would single me out in 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 many uh, platforms and ask uh, the mayor to remove me, and the mayor removed me. And so, and the mayor framed your removal as necessary to move forward after the Texas Historical Commission said the Cenotaph is not moving. The large white monument that's right in front of the Long Barracks there in Alamo Plaza. So do you feel like you were digging your heels in on that very issue, which has become such a hot button one for so many people? Was that a sticking point for you? No, actually, uh, let's let's be clear. What what the issue was is, is that I what I wouldn't bend on was the the position that uh, the city was beginning to negotiate with the state on spending city dollars on state property we shouldn't be doing that 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 just i think is irresponsible and uh, really begs uh, us to ask a lot of questions of why are we why would we spend millions of dollars uh, on state controlled property it was never part of the deal and certainly we still don't even know what we're going to do in this redesign so uh, all I ask is that that people take a look at uh, take a closer look at uh, how we are negotiating this uh, new lease. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of details. We spent years getting to where we got to on the current lease. There's no rush to to redefine it. Uh, so I think we should take our time. And uh, a lot of people, I think, have have uh, approached me and said, you know, they, they don't understand either why why we're doing this at this time. Uh, the the issue for me again is simply the city, which has the, the least amount of, of funds allocated to this project. And, and of course we have uh, the least amount of revenues is, is proposing to spend money, millions of dollars on state controlled property and nobody understands what we're getting out of that. And that's something that I, I wanted to touch on because a lot of people, I, I think they don't understand the lease between the city and the general land office. You and I did an interview days before your removal from these positions for an episode of Case That Explains. Diving into all of that, that's out there for people who want to dive into that information as well on our website. But you talk about the lieutenant governor getting involved in this. This has become a politicized issue, certainly over the last several years. Do you think that that has led to the message of why the Alamo is being redesigned in the first place, led to that being lost? Yeah, I, well, I think uh, we're, we're, what, what's been lost is all the great work that went into the, the current master plan that we all know and the current lease. Uh, it went through um, hundreds of uh, public meetings. It had a lot of uh, incredible professionals, design professionals, uh, spend time to, to really come up with what we thought was going to be a world-class project and um, only to be uh, you know, uh, met with uh, resistance from the lieutenant governor who, who uh, was very, very concerned about uh, you know, only telling the 1836 battle, which we've always said we, we're not going to do that. We're going to be telling a complete story. And I also want to be clear when it comes to the Cenotaph, 
absolutely nobody ever made a big deal about the cenotaph itself. But this isn't about the cenotaph. This is about all the components of the master plan that were adopted and voted for, including the mayor. Um, you know, we all agreed that this was the plan we would all move forward on. And so uh, we're advocating for elements of the plan as agreed upon to, to move forward. It was spelled out in the lease, and that's why it was important to move forward with all those elements. As a result of the denial at the THC, uh, the, the major contributors, major uh, contributors to, to, uh, to raise, that were going to raise several hundred million dollars to build a world-class ca- museum, all left. Uh, they, this is uh, something that they were very serious about. Uh, the, the lieutenant governor and John Now at the, at the Texas Historical Commission uh, dismissed that threat as, as something that could be renegotiated and that, that, that they could redesign the plan. And unfortunately, that's what seems to be happening as the plan mm-hmm. is being redesigned. And again, my my only real concern right now is that as, as before I was dismissed, um, you know, m- the issue I was raising was that the city is is proposing to spend millions of dollars on state control property, which was never part of the deal, basically leaves us uh, holding the bag for the infrastructure improvements we were supposed to make around the area. This th- That's our responsibility as a city, to improve uh, a lot of the infrastructure around that area to, to help make this a more successful project. Um, but at the, in the end, again, it's, it's, it's a, as you said, a complex project. It's got many parts. You still don't know what the design is. It's mm-hmm. going to take some time. And I just don't think we should be redoing a lease without fully understanding what it means and what the city is getting out of this. Councilman, this is about- I appreciate all of your time. Unfortunately, we're out of it on our end, but there are so many different layers to what's happening with this project. And I I again want to point people to the direction of the interview you and I did uh, just a couple of weeks ago. KSAT.com slash explains, get a better understanding of the timeline where the plans stand now. Thanks so much for your insight, Councilman. Thank you.